In this video, we'll be looking at how to set up a steady flow simulation with resistance boundary condition, starting with the patient specific geometry. We'll be using a Glenn geometry to set up the simulation. Then fire up your SimVascular. Once it's open, create a new SV project and we'll call it Glenn. And in my case, I put it under desktop SimVascular tutorial Glenn, in which I already have a patient specific model that was built for a Glenn patient. Load that model say choose and then I hit OK. So you'll see that the project by default creates these um, sub panels. Once the project has been created, go to models and right click on it and say import solid model. Navigate your file path to the location of the model file. In this case, I have a glenn underscore new sv underscore cm dot mdl file, which I double click on. If the model loading is successful, you'll see it here. If I double click on it, you'll see this panel that opens on the right of the screen. You see that the model has all these face lists that are associated with it. And I also want to look at the model since I don't need the axial, sagittal, and coronal planes because I'm not segmenting an image. I'll just make this panel the full view and I'll also then reset the view. A brief introduction to the model, it, it has an SVC that's plugged into a pulmonary arterial circulation. So this is your SVC and these are your pulmonary arteries. Uh, let me hide the crosshair so that we can see the model much better. We are going to impose a flow on this face here, which is called the inflow, and all the other faces will be a resistance boundary condition face or a Neumann surface. In this simulation, we'll be simulating a rigid wall condition. So all these walls that you see here will be labeled rigid. In order to run a simulation on this geometry, we should be able to discretize it so that we can run final polymer simulations on it. So we are going to create a mesh. To do that, click on meshes and right click and say create mesh. Um, you need to select the model, which in our case is a Glenn new SVCM. And we're going to use a TetGen mesher. And let's just uh, leave the mesh name um, blank so that it uses model name by default. But if you want to use a different name, feel free to click OK. So you have a new mesh object that's created on SimVascular. Now, typically people use this global estimate tool, which should help you determine a good mesh size for your geometry. And since I want a fast meshing on this geometry, I'll click this option. If you want to explore each of these options for meshing, I encourage you to go to simvascular.org, which redirects you to this page. And there's a good YouTube tutorial. It takes you through all the different uh, meshing options within Simvascular, although on one of the older versions, but it's still good enough to help you find your way through the meshing tools in Simvascular. Also, I highly encourage you to go through all the documentation and the other user guides on SimVascular if at any point you get stuck. Coming back to meshing, in this case, because I want the meshing to go fast and I want a mesh that's good enough to run on my desktop, I give it a size of 0.07 and say run measure, say yes. And if your model has meshed successfully, you should see a window that pops up like this. It says number of element is roughly 750,000, which is small enough that I can run on my desktop. So click OK and look at this mesh. Let's uh, toggle the visibility on the solid model. And if you actually zoom in, you can see that the geometry has been well discretized by tetrahedral elements. We'll use this mesh to run the simulations. In order to do that, we'll say simulation and say we'll create a simulation job. Now you're again, uh, feel free to give a name that you find most appropriate. In my case, I'll say um, a steady resistance because we're going to use a steady inflow boundary condition. Okay, if you double click on steady resistance, it should open a tab on the right hand side of the panel where you are able to set our simulation parameters as well as assign inflow and outflow boundary conditions. Fluid density and viscosity are in CGS units here. This looks fine, so I'll not change it. Initial pressure, I'll just keep it at zero for now. The initial velocities are in initialized to 0.0001, which is almost, which is for all practical purposes, zero. Let's go ahead and set the boundary condition on each of these outflows. As I told you, you know, we'll be using resistance boundary condition and we'll be using a steady inflow boundary condition at this inflow. Let's do that. We'll set the boundary condition to resistance on all these. So you will see that all the outflows have been set to resistance here, whereas the inflow has been set to prescribed velocities. Now let's then set the outflow resistance values for each of these outlets. Use the notepad file that has been provided to you and type the resistance value that's appropriate to the outflow name you see here. So once you have typed all the resistance values in this column, open a text editor. So we'll use this text editor to create the inflow.flow file required for SimVascular. The first column is time. The second column is flow value in milliliters per second of sitting on the units you're using. 
And in this case, we're going to say at time zero, it's minus 25, and at time 0 0.1, it's minus 25 again. And save that file under Glenn simulations, create a new folder called I'll save that. We need to link the inflow face to that file. So we'll say prescribed. And if you double click on inflow, you have the option of prescribing a plug, parabolic, or Womersley. In this case, we'll just use parabolic for demonstrative purposes. A steady flow, I'll use less number of Fourier modes. I direct it to steady.flow and say open. I click OK. Now the inflow is mapped to the flow file. So let's get the other things in simulation. We want a rigid boundary condition on the walls, so we'll say rigid. Uh, there's also an option to do deformable with constant material properties or deformable with variable material properties on the wall. For now, we'll stick to rigid. For the solver parameters, because it's a steady simulation, let's just go up to 100 steps where each um, step is one millisecond, so that would be 0 0.001. The number of time steps between restarts determine the time steps at which the solutions are written to the file. So we'll say here we want stress to be out, uh, we want output surface stress so we'll leave that as is we'll leave force calculation velocity based um, this is used to compute your wall shear we want average solutions yes we so step reconstruction will change that to four so this is the number of linear nonlinear iterations during the solve will not change pressure coupling or backflow stabilization residual control will be set to true we'll just change that to be 0.0 well converged solution, solver type, yes, we want Navier-Stokes. Uh, we'll leave all these the same, change this to 10, which is what I like when I run simulations because it gives you well converged solutions. Rest of the things can be left as is. So the linear solver is a bipartitioning algorithm. We create the files for running the simulation. And yes, we choose the mesh we just created. And we'll say create data files for simulation. You click on that button, Simvascular will write the required solution files to run a simulation, say OK. OK, so once the data files have been created successfully, you'll get this dialog box. Uh, you have the option of changing the number of processors to higher number of processors if you want the simulation to go fast. I'm happy with one for now. And you also have the option of starting the simulation at a step number that's different from zero. Hit run simulation and says it's going to take a while and you say yes. And now Simvascular is running your simulation and you just wait for it to finish the simulation. So while you're doing that, so if you go to the, the project folder you created at the beginning of the tutorial, Glenn, and click on simulations, you'll see that Simvascular has created a folder called steady underscore resistance, where it has a number of files that were generated for you to run a simulation. Mesh complete has the mesh for your geometry. BCT is your inflow boundary condition file. JOMBC is where all the geometric information and the mesh related information is stored. Histor.dat is created when your simulation has just started running. And numstart is the time step at which Simvascular is at right now. If you double click on it, you'll see that right now it's at step zero. Restart is where all the solutions are written. Solver.inp is your input file for the solver. So SVLS NS is the log on your linear solver. You, you are welcome to go through the Simvascular website and find out in greater detail what each of these files do. For now, we'll wait for the simulation to go through and then we'll post-process the results to see what the results look like. So once your job is finished, you end up with a dialog box like this. Click OK. So if you open the histor.dat file and look at the residuals, you can see that they're pretty low here. It's of the order of 10 raised to minus 3. So the final time step, you see that it's of the order of 10 raised to minus 4, which means you have a well converged solution. Also, you see that the drop in the log of the residual is of the order of 20 units here, which is good because it means your solution is coming again. You also see that your simulation has output restart.0, dot .100, which are all your uh, solutions at these time steps. Um, if you remember, you had set the time step to restart as 25, which is why it's writing out solution at every time, 25 time steps. So your solution is now done. And in the next um, tutorial video, I'll show you how to post-process these results.